What a wonderful day it is to be in the house of the Lord to worship that light God has sent uh, for all of us to enjoy and for his son Jesus Christ, uh, our Lord and Savior. I want to thank uh, the elders and all for the opportunity to be able to speak to you all today as Dan and Audrey are away. Uh, it is a great honor for me uh, to be able to uh, speak to you all today on a certain matter today. Uh, as preparing for this lesson, uh, I searched uh, the scriptures very hard to, to find a fitting lesson and I always enjoy studying the Bible, but it is difficult for me to present it. Uh, to y'all as y'all most y'all know I have a fear of speaking in front of people but I know the Lord will get me through it and I've had a lot of encouragement by a lot of you here today that just told me to keep it short so that they can beat the Baptist to the restaurants today so I'll try my best to do that as well this morning's lesson is entitled is Jesus really the only way to heaven now if I were to get y'all to answer that question this morning I uh, figure most of you here will answer yes to that question however there are some in the world and we may live our lives at times as if Jesus was not the only way to heaven this title here all dogs go to heaven is a cartoon that come out several years ago I don't think I've ever watched it I don't even know what it's about but the title caught my eye all dogs go to heaven because it's a good feeling to know that if someone dies or animal dies they go to that place which we long for but what about people? Do all humans make it to heaven when they die? If you know the scripture and you are a Christian, you know that some may not make it to heaven. However, there are people in the world and around us in this community that speak differently of that. Many speak as if everyone will make it to that beautiful place that we call heaven after we leave this earth. Heaven is a beautiful comfort and a blessing to be reminded of when facing the end of life or to comfort us as we grieve the loss of a loved one. That place that we refer to is a place of bliss, happiness, where there's no more pain and no more sorrow, and it is a place that all Christians long to go for. However, everybody, except for a few, wants to go to this place, and it is a beautiful place that we go to. Many people say being a good person or treating others right is good enough to get in heaven. People say to get to heaven, you just have to do good works. Or if you're a member of a certain church or a denomination or a religion, that will get you into heaven. Others say obeying the Ten Commandments is the only way uh, to get to heaven because God is too loving to send anyone to hell. We know that God loves us, and we know that he doesn't want all of us to go to hell. As a matter of fact, he created us to live forever in eternity in heaven with him. But the fact is, we will live even after life here on earth in eternity, but there's also eternity in hell as well. But God wants us to live. All roads don't lead to the same place. As we know here in the world, if you take one highway and the next, that same road won't take you to the same place, and when it comes to our spiritual decisions as to go to heaven, all roads don't lead to the same place. In fact, there's only one road, there's only one way to heaven. But who should we believe? In a world that we live in today, it's easy to, to go by our gut feelings. What we uh, feel emotionally is the right way to do things, and when it comes to our spiritual life as to go to heaven, we tend to go by feelings. It could be our parents, it could be pastors, it could be ministers, it could be role models in our life that we tend to believe before we believe the scripture. And it's not a, a bad thing, it's a human nature thing that we do. I'm reminded of a story that I was told years ago when I was believing in something, and I just recently reread it in a book that I'm reading as well today. Uh, it's Muscle and Shovel, I pretty much think that most of you have read that. If you haven't, it's a good book to read. But there was a story in that book about a newlywed couple that had just gotten married, and his new wife was preparing a ham for a family dinner. And she began to make this ham, and she pulled it out of the package, and she cut one end off of it and threw it in the trash and went to bake in the ham. And the, the husband says to his new wife, why do you do that? She says, well, I really don't know. My mother always done it that way, so that's just the way I do it. He said, well, I would like to know when your mother gets here this afternoon, let's ask her why she cut that ham off and threw it in the trash. 
West, the family began to come to the house. Uh, the newly uh, bride asked her mother, Mom, why do you cut the end of the ham off and throw it in the trash? She goes, I don't know, honey. We'll have to ask Granny. She's done it all her whole life, and I did it too. And so when Granny got there, the new bride asked her grandmother, says, Granny, why do, why do we cut the side of the ham off and throw it in the trash? She goes, there's no reason behind it. The ham just wouldn't fit in my pan, so I always just threw that off. <laughs> and we always believe that. And when we are in life, we believe, tend to believe the same things. There's not a reason behind it, but it's just tradition that we do things, and we feel that it's the right thing. And in all, it's really not. But it's important to ask these questions from the source that it come from to really know the meaning behind something. So who should we believe when it comes to figuring out the way to heaven? So should we believe people or should we look into the scriptures? What if we did listen to Jesus in the testimony of the scripture? Do you believe what Jesus has to say? Do you respect the authority in the scripture of the scripture? Many people in our day and time start with their emotions first and not with the word of God. And we should start with the word of God. You see, Jesus came from heaven to a world full of evil as no man has ever had. Jesus is the true light that gives light to every man coming into the world. But what gave Jesus the authority to give us the way to heaven? Well, Matthew 28, Jesus says that I have been given authority over heavens and earth, and we are to go out and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So the authority came from God. In the beginning, the Word, in the beginning there was the Word, then the Word was with God, and the, and the Word is God, and then the Word become flesh. But is Jesus really the only way to heaven? Yes, he is, and I'm going to tell you why by the scripture today, and not by my own opinion or anybody else's opinion, but we will look at the scripture today to see why Jesus is the only way to heaven. Number one, because of who he is. Again, in 1 John chapter 1, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. And the word become flesh, which was Jesus. So of who he was, he is the word. The name Jesus is just an equivalent Greek word of Joshua. Joshua in the Old Testament times were out to say the Israelites. The word Jesus and Joshua means God saves. Before Jesus was even born, the angels appeared to Joseph in Matthew chapter 1 and verse 21. It says, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife. For the child within her was conceived by the Holy Spirit, and she will have a son, and you are to name him Jesus, the one who saves. For he will save his people and their sins. You see, his name alone means to save. In Acts 4.12, Peter says, Salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to men by which we must be saved. Think about that. There's no other name, no other way on earth that a man can be saved. Jesus said in Matthew 9 13, he says, I have come to call not the righteous, but the sinners. And in John 12, 46, I have come as a light to shine in this dark world. Jesus came as a light to shine upon the darkness. Not those who were faithful, but those who were sinners and those that were on the wrong path. Jesus said, I am the son of man. I have come to seek and save those who are lost. And in John 14, 6, Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father except through me. Jesus is the only way to heaven, not only because of who he is, but secondly, because of how he lived. We're taught from an early age that Jesus lived a perfect life life without sin but unless you really look at him in a different light and to see his life as a characteristic person you can really see it Jesus was amongst high priest very religious people uh, very faithful people but Jesus asked a question to them can any one of you convict me of a single misleading word 
or a sinful act. Against Jesus there, Jesus could not be proven guilty of any or found of any sin. Jesus lived a perfect life. And 1 Peter says that he committed no sin, or, or, nor was deceit found in his mouth. Jesus lived a perfect life. Paul writes in 2 Corinthians 5.21, Who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. You see, Jesus lived a perfect life while we were in sin. He was the sin for us. God has put on him the punishment for all evil that we have done. Even though Jesus was tempted just as much as we are in this life, probably worse, he never gave in to it, but he paid the punishment for us. He lived to be punished for what we had done. Jesus is the only way to heaven, not only because of who he is or because how he lived, but thirdly, because of how he loved. Jesus doesn't scream or shout his love from heavens above. His love is around us each and every day. For in John 15, 13, says, Greater love has none than this, than a man lay down his life for his friends, and Jesus came to do just that. Jesus held on while the wicked people were doing evil things around him. You see, many people see the picture of Jesus on the cross with the blood flowing down, with the crown of thorns on his head, and with the nails through his hands and feet and think that Jesus was nailed to the cross and that was was holding him up. But in fact, it was his love that held him on that cross. Jesus is the only way to heaven because of who he is because of how he lived, because of how he loved, and fourthly and lastly, because he is the truth. The truth. This is one of my favorite passages of all times. I read it daily, just about. Jesus is comforting his disciples and comforts us today in these words. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in, me, believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. And where I go you know, and the way you know. But Thomas said unto him, as a lot of us do today in the world, Lord, we do not know where you go, and how can we know the way? And Jesus said this to Thomas, and he says it to us today. Jesus said unto him, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life, and no man cometh to the Father but by me. You see, when we put our faith and trust in ministers, pastors, those ahead of us, they're human. And humans tend to fail at times. Now, there are some trustworthy people out there that you can trust, but humans do fail. But God is the truth. Jesus is the truth, and we can believe him. Listen to this. No man cometh to the Father, which is heaven, but by me. Not by being good. Not by works. Not by sitting in the pews every Sunday morning. Not by the denomination that you're of, not because of your last name, but by me. That is Jesus. Peter says in Acts chapter 4, 12, says, Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. And Paul in 1 Corinthians 3 says, For other foundation can no man lay down, can lay than that is laid which is Jesus Christ. No man, no man can do that. No other way. Our foundation in our Christianity and our foundation to the way to heaven is by no other man but Jesus Christ. You see, Jesus has said, I have come that they may have life and have it more abundantly. Is Jesus the only way to heaven? Will you believe him today? Will you put your trust in Jesus? Mark 16, 16, Jesus says, He that believeth 
and is baptized will be saved. When preparing for this lesson, I ask God to give me the words and the strength to speak to all of you today on this matter, a big matter, a salvation matter. And I pray that if there was anybody that joined the congregation this morning that has not obeyed the gospel, that they will listen to this and not leave this building another day without obeying the gospel. You see, we have life after earth. That life could be with God in heaven or it can be eternity in hell. The choice is ours. God for so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that he believeth in him shall not perish but have life everlasting. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, even though he die, shall he live. That promise was true then, it is true today. And I ask that if you are here today and you haven't obeyed the gospel, that you won't leave here today. You can be baptized for the remission of your sins. Or perhaps you have obeyed the gospel and been a believer for many years. It's easy for us as humans to stir away and to think that there's other ways to get to heaven and we take our focus off of the light that God has given us. Would you come forward this morning and let us restore you with prayer into God's presence as we stand and as we sing.